Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create some drop shadows that are different than the ones you might have traditionally seen, where you have a solid color that appears behind whatever shape you're trying to apply a drop shadow to. These drop shadows are more interesting. They're colorful, they're smart, in that they take whatever's displayed in the foreground and use some of those colors as part of defining the shadow that appears behind them. The inspiration for this kind of came from when I was walking through Home Depot one day and I saw this like display of smart lights where they were showing all kinds of interesting things. But one of the more interesting ones was I think it's the Philips Hue light where it was placed behind the television screen and whatever was being shown on the screen, the lights behind the TV would try to mimic and approximate the colors as best as it can. It looks a little bit like what you see on the screen where you can see the colors around the TV behind it are very similar to the colors you see at the edges on the foreground. So you see a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, a little bit of pink. Kind of cool, has a nice effect to it. And so I was like, why don't we try to create this in CSS? And as it turns out, we totally can. And we're gonna take a look at how exactly to do this from scratch. To give you a little bit more detail on what we're creating, the two examples of the sushi emoji are shown on screen. On the left, you see a traditional version, a boring version, we have a drop shadow. You can see the sushi emoji is visible and the drop shadow behind it mirrors the shape of the actual emoji and you can see the color is just a plain traditional dark gray. Not great, not bad, not great. But on the right hand side you see another version where our drop shadow isn't a solid color. It actually is a version of the sushi emoji itself where you can see some of the colors diffusing out and creating something that's slightly more vivid, slightly more interesting in terms of if the sushi were a light source, what would the shadow behind it actively look like. And so that's what we're going to do and that's what we're going to create. Now, if you look at the description for this video, you'll see a link to the article where you can see the full code for making this all work and making it all do exactly what we're doing. But since we're here, since we're live in a video format, I'm going to create this example completely from scratch. Where I'm going to write every line of HTML and CSS needed to make this work. I think it'd be a lot of fun. One way to find out is if we try it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create this from the ground up. So what I have here is I have my screen split into two halves. One half is Visual Studio Code, where I have an empty HTML file. And on the right-hand side, I just have my browser currently pointing to opening this particular file. And there's nothing fancy going on here. There's no hot reload or no complicated configuration behind the scenes. As I'm writing my code, I'm gonna periodically save and I'll refresh the page here manually. And you'll see things as they're going on. So let's go ahead and get started. A handy shortcut to start creating a new HTML page in VS Code is by just typing in the exclamation point and hitting enter. And what this does is it gives you the bare bones boilerplate for building a page that matches the very empty HTML5 syntax. So I'm gonna go and type in colorful shadows, nothing fancy there. And if I refresh the page now, you'll see that the title now shows colorful shadows. Like I said, nothing going on interesting. And so first I'm gonna go and add the HTML elements that will make this work. And I'll walk through each of the elements we're adding and what relevant piece they're adding either to the structure of the DOM itself or to the CSS that'll actually make the shadow and the colorful smart shadow specifically come to life. Our first, let's get the emoji up on the screen. There's nothing fancy here that we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be using a div. So div class equals parent. And inside this div, there's gonna be one more div. And this div element will be the one that actually is used to display the emoji itself. Div class colorful shadow. And let's go ahead and close this div element. I have my notes over here on the other side to, let, to make sure I'm not winging it. So if you see me looking over on the screen, that's basically what I am doing. And of course, Pixel is right here, just watching me with the intent to come on screen or attack me. So if you see like a, a flurry of claws and fur coming up at me, it's just Pixel. He's just being himself. All right. So I added two div elements. And as expected, nothing really fancy should be going on here because the div element have no content. There's no styling added to make this all look different. We're just in a very plain state right here. So now let's go ahead and make our sushi image up here. The way we're going to add the image is as a background to the div element we have created at this point. And so let's see, I have my style. And let me add one more class value here. I'm going to call this sushi just to make sure we have two style rules that will target the element based on the class value we have here. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just get the sushi image to appear. I'm defining my style rule dot sushi. 
margin is 100 pixels you know we want it to be not at the edge of the page itself let's give it a width 150 pixels height of 150 pixels as well and now here's where the magic happens we're going to say background image and it's going to be yes slash www.krupa.com slash icon slash 1f363.svg emojis always have a slightly strange way of being able to be defined now let's go ahead and put background repeat no repeat we don't want the background to keep repeating and the background size will be contained we want to stay within the boundaries of the 150 by 150 box we're creating so here we have it our sushi style rule then we're going to refresh the page to see what's going on and notice now that you can see our sushi appearing on screen i'm going to make the window even smaller so we're going to see more of the page i want to make sure the text is large enough so that you can see what's going on as well now let's zoom in the sushi also why not okay so we have our starting point currently defined our sushi image is being displayed on screen now what we're going to do next though is we want to specify a drop shadow behind this image there are three things to kind of keep in mind what we're trying to do the first is we want the drop shadow as expected to be positioned directly behind where we have our sushi image you know it'd be kind of odd to have it be somewhere else um, assuming the light source is directly above the element not offset at an angle so the drop shadow will be going in various directions and the other part is we want to inherit the same background image as part of defining the shadow. I don't want to copy and paste markup. I don't want to position the markup behind the behind another element. I'll do some of the more awkward ergonomic gymnastics that typically happen in making this effect work. And the way this drop shadow is going to be created is partly basing the drop shadow, but it's primarily going to be used, done using filters to kind of give you that nice diffuse color effect and to also make sure that the drop shadow appears behind the full shape of the SVG as opposed to just the box that gets created as a result. And so let's go ahead and deal with uh, all of those three things. So first I'm going to go ahead and define my colorful shadow style rule. This is going to be very simple. All I'm going to say is position relative and you'll see why in a few moments. Now what I want to do is have this drop shadow appear behind everything else. And instead of, you know one of the things I mentioned is that I don't want to create another DOM element or position it absolutely behind everything else. So I'm going to use a pseudo selector after. And this is a way where in CSS, I can actually manipulate the DOM a bit by creating and defining elements that can be either in front of the element or behind the element. After means it's going to be coming after the element and depending on how you position it, it can be put behind everything else. So first, the content property is gonna be empty. This DOM element will not have any content inside of it. And its width is gonna be 100%, height's gonna be 100%. And this width and height is essentially inheriting from the sushi value that we have here because it is currently being applied to this element. So the colorful shadow after is going to mimic really the, the boundaries of the box already created by the larger sushi element that we see here. Now, I'm going to set position to absolute. This means that I want to be able to freeform place it wherever I want and not have it follow the traditional box layout. And then background. Now, this is the cool part. The background, I can specify background image, copy and paste this in exactly like I've done before. But one of the cool things you have now is the inherit keyword. And by doing this, our colorful shadow style rule, the background value inherits the background value from the parent in this case, which is really the, the sushi image. So I can kind of simplify a whole lot of copying and pasting and maintenance by just doing this. And I want to make sure the background is positioned appropriately in the center. So I'm using center, center as my keyword. And now here's the here's the big part, filter. I'm gonna put drop shadow as my filter. Actually, Visual Studio is saying they misspelled something. Very convenient. Okay, so drop shadow with zero pixels to make sure there's no offset there. It's gonna be blurred at about 10 pixels. And the color that the drop shadow will have will be black, but it will be black with the alpha value of 0.5, which means that it will be partially transparent or halfway transparent, and it'll be a grayish color as a result of it. And then the last value I'm gonna put here is I'm gonna give it a blur value of 20 pixels. Great. And now there's one last thing to do before we are done in this area, is set a Z index value of negative one. This means that my new shadow, as I'm positioning it right above everything else, I want to go behind the element we're trying to apply to. You know, a drop shadow up here in front of the element, you know, that becomes like a like an inset shadow or something else, like a, a blur at the end. 
So we made all these changes. We specified our two filters, the drop shadow and the blur. Let's go refresh the page to see what's going on. Okay, so let's see. Why is this not currently applying? One of the best things about like doing things live is that you never quite know why something is working or is not working. And let's see, blur. Oh, look at this. I did not close the the value appropriately. So, da, and drop shadow, and not have two lines there. Now, if I refresh it, and now look at that. Now you can see the drop shadow currently appearing in the background using the foreground image as its kind of, I guess, its muse or source to make it look the way it does. Kind of cool, right? And that's a very simple way of doing it. And of course, as you can see, we're doing it live, so you can kind of see me kind of debugging and seeing how this works or not works in appropriate moment. And so the key things to kind of, you know, keep in mind is that what we're seeing here is a result of the sushi image that we've defined as part of the background image on the, what I'm calling the parent element. And then the shadow inherits that same sushi image because it is a background. By saying background inherit, it automatically does this. I wish there was a content inherit where you can actually specify an image element, for example, and not have it be a background image. I haven't found a way to make that work, at least not in a way that works without writing JavaScript or works in a cross browser way or doesn't require writing some SVG code specifically. So this is a maybe a, a good solution, maybe a temporary solution, but this definitely gets the job done and it's following typical HTML, I guess, best practices. That, actually, I wouldn't say best practice, but definitely following some kind of practice in HTML. And so now you can see that the drop shadow filter is being applied. So if I, for example, if I change the, you know, the background to be completely black, you can see that it, you know, causes it to be more, more darker and darker, but I'm just gonna keep it as a 0.5 just to make the blur more natural, less, less you know, intense in that case. And so the last thing I just wanna kind of talk about is because we are in CSS territory, there's no reason why we can't do like something like an animation. So I'm just gonna, gonna this is entirely optional, but since, since we're here, might as well add an animation to this one. So I'm going to define my animation. I'm gonna call it oscillate, the keyframes for that. It's gonna be one second. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a cubic Bezier timing function. I figured fiddle with this earlier. So 0 0.17, 0 0.67, and let's see, 0.45 and 1.32. So it'll be a slight bounce to this. And we want it to loop forever, infinite, kind of like Avengers and I want it to alternate back and forth. So it's gonna loop forward and backward without any issues. The last thing that remains now that we define the animation is to actually define the keyframe that I'm currently calling oscillate. So keyframes, oscillate, and it's gonna be very simple from and to animation. The from value will be transform, scale one and one, so no scale whatsoever. And then the after will be a transform of, let's make it grow by 30%. So scale 1.3 and 1.3. All right, unless I made some horrific typo somewhere here, if I refresh this page, you will now see that the background is currently animating. And you can see it more vividly if I give the body a background color slightly more dark. Let's just make it black just for, just for added intensity. Background color, black and refresh this page. And now you can really see the, the background kind of glowing in this way. Black might be a little, the wrong color, but you get, the, you get the general idea. And so with that, we've got to a point where we've created this colorful smart shadow using nothing but CSS, something that I'm gonna say even a few years ago wasn't possible. And the magic behind this, the secret sauce that makes all work is the after pseudo element, being able to use CSS to not only define the appearance of my shadow, but to actually define the element, the virtual pseudo element that appears to define the blurry version of it is a critical part of making this work and not having to duplicate my background properties by using the inherit keyword on my pseudo element just is like the icing on the cake to make this whole thing work really well. And so with that, if you have any questions, please post in the forums at formnetgroup.com where I and thousands of other really cool front-end web developer types will be happy to help you out, just chat or give you some clarity on anything you might be needing some clarity on. If you like the video and you like the way I present this information, tell your friends and enemies all about it. 
Even if you didn't like the video or how we present the animation, tell your friends anyway. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that will be coming out. Follow me at Karupa on Twitter, on Facebook, and in all the various places you might find someone to be sharing this kind of content named Karupa. And I also like to write books. I like to provide all the information in video form, also as a free article on the website, but also as a book if you prefer having the more the physical tactile feel of a, a physical book on a page or a Kindle device if you want to. There's a bunch of books I've written, so go ahead and look at the description to see what book might be of interest to you or to a friend or as a great gift for someone you just want to teach web development to. And with that, I will see you all next time.